we are having some yeah there you go recording progress and we go live also in facebook and there you go got it there you go. yeah so thank you guys for being here i know there are some other people that probably will be entering a little bit late but i want just to be mindful about your own time <laughs> i don't want you to be waiting here so uh, first of all, my name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of LATAM Startups. Um, in LATAM Startups is an accelerator uh, based in Toronto. Uh, we basically work different programs for uh, international and local startups. But those local startups also, you know, uh, usually are newcomers. Um, so I always love to do this session by navigating, uh, you know, the, uh, the website because in that way it's easier uh, for people to basically, um, you know, understand how things work. Um, so the first thing is to understand, you know, our programs. I guess that there are many people that usually uh, will, um, you know, enter to the website and uh, try to understand what type of program is best for you if you are a startup. So the first thing, you know, uh, we always put information about the startup visa program because it seems to be the most popular type of program that we have. But of course, if you go to programs, you will see all the programs here, right? All the programs that we have and uh, the ones that uh, probably are right now in waiting list as well, because there are many uh, you know, of the programs that are already running. Um, that doesn't mean that you cannot uh, you know, apply for the program, but it means that you know, uh, particularly this at this time of the year, there is no opening. It will be an opening soon, um, in particular for the startup programs uh, that is linked with the Star Visa program. Uh, will be an opening soon, uh, perhaps after October 15, and this is for uh, you know starting in 2023. So I'm going to start basically by uh, you know letting know people about our three phase program. So our three-phase program is basically, um, you know, the one that is linked with the Star Visa program, as I said before. Um, many people are interested in this program, and normally they want to learn about, you know, what what is required to really get into Star Visa program. There is not uh, um, direct access to the Star Visa program per se. We have, uh, you know, phase one, phase two, and once the companies finish phase two, then they become eligible uh, to be a part of the Servisa program. Phase one is just one month, and it comes with a lot of preparation, you know, for people to understand better if their assumptions are correct about North America. Many times I have to say that the startups that are accepted into this program uh, they have, uh, you know, assumptions based on uh, what is happening in their home country or and sometimes what is happening in other similar countries. Uh, but North America is very different and they need to understand better, you know, the legal framework and also the costs related and the timing uh, for entering into this, uh, you know, entering into North America. So for this reason, you know, we kind of try to uh, put together a, criteri a criteria that is, um, you know, match with the Star Visa program from the beginning. So we need to have, you know, technology companies that can claim intellectual property. Uh, so for this part, uh, you know, many people don't understand why intellectual property is important. Uh, we have a whole session about that, you know, about why intellectual property is important, but in general, it's because, uh, you know, to raise money in North America and uh, even to get grants uh, from the federal government is required to have some intellectual property around. So, you know, people can, you know, make sure that their companies are going to grow in a good level. Uh, we need some financial stability because companies coming to North America also have to assume all the cost of the first year of operations. So when uh, we receive emails saying, hey, we just uh, don't know, you know, like, uh, are you receiving companies in ideation? Um, we don't, because we need to have uh, at the beginning, you know, um, companies that actually can, uh, you know, have some sales traction or some funding traction, even it's like a funding from their uh, own um, uh, co-founders 
in order to survive here the first year, you know, the, an, an idea is just an idea and it takes a lot of time to actually develop that idea and to become a, some, some kind of product, you know, uh, for, for these companies. Of course, we are seeking for coachable teams and, you know, the companies that uh, have some of the co-founders willing to relocate in Canada for those that are, uh, you know, entering into a visa program. Um, not all the co-founders have to relocate. Sometimes, uh, you know, if you have a company with five co-founders, maybe, you know, three or four are willing to relocate or just two of them. And sometimes we have just one that are relocating to Canada, which is okay. Um, we need to have the co-founders that are going to be relocating and attending the pro program uh, with a good business level, you know, English level um, to come to the program. So the cost of the program is here, you know, it's very clear for uh, uh, companies that are coming uh, to the program. The cost of the program is up to five co-founders. So it's per company, it's not per co-founder. And um, then after this month, you know, we basically have a diagnosis of the company. We understand what are the challenges and the opportunities and the companies will decide whether or not entering into phase three makes sense for them. And they continue into a market entry uh, process, in which case they will be basically, uh, you know, going into focus groups, talking with clients, you know, preparing their sales pitch making sure they have the right, uh, you know, um, business mentors around. It's people that have a lot of experience uh, in their fields and they can actually tell them what is going to be the main challenge and how to, you know, overcome that challenge. Of course, we have IP advice, uh, which is intellectual property advice for the companies that don't have yet claim intellectual property. And, a, you know, introduction to our local community through an event. There's many times this event is uh, being online just because most of the companies have not uh, come in person for phase two yet. So the criteria is basically the same as phase one, just that, you know, we are aiming for, of course, the companies that have finished phase, uh, phase one to uh, finalize phase two. The cost of the program is again is twenty five hundred dollars per month. It's five thousand dollars for two months. That that uh, when companies finish the program, and at the end of the program, they can actually enter into an interview with our board of directors, which will decide whether or not they are eligible for the Star Visa program, which is our acceleration program. And this program in particular. Uh, you know, it's for six months. Uh, we've been very lucky this year to receive a grant from the, the federal government. And uh, we are um, helping the companies with some extra resources like C fractional executives. Um, this is something that is uh, pretty new in our community. These are C level um, executives that are helping the companies to understand better uh, or to do better in certain areas like sales and marketing and finance, you know, are the areas that in particular the C-levels are helping. We also have, um, you know, the, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> so Juan, Juan Pablo is asking if uh, there is any questions so far. Um, so there are any other C, C executives uh, and you can actually see those C-level executives in about us. Uh, you know, here you find the profiles of our C-level uh, executives uh, in our community. Also, our business mentor, most of them are there. And our market experts mentors also are listed in here. Um, so the Star Visa program, the, the six months program, um, you know, has also some mentoring in regards of talent acquisition and investment, uh, you know, preparedness. Uh, for companies that are already ready to receive investment or to receive funding from the uh, a, you know, federal government or local government because there are a lot of grants in the market. So the criteria basically is the same as phase one and phase two, just you know, we are aiming to have the approval for the board of directors. Uh, once you finalize phase two and you get the approval for the board of directors is when we give the little support. So, this is at the beginning of phase three, not at the end of phase three. The letter of support is good for six months, and we are hoping that the companies are going to finalize the legal paperwork to obtain work permit and permanent residence once they, um, in that six months period, they finalize the paperwork. 
The work permit and permanent residence time frame it depends of where the company is located. Sometimes it depends of different circumstances. So it is not in our um, control right now. Uh, if somebody like uh, you know receives or not the permanent residence or the work permit, and we want to be very very clear about this part because is um, you know uh, people sometimes think that you know the letter of support is kind of like a magic document that will give them the work permit or permanent residence, but it's not like that. The government is always the one who approves, and that's why our process is very strict. Because we can tell, you know, the companies are really good and really scalable, and we are trying to, um, uh, you know, mitigate any risk in regards of that rejection for uh, work permits or permanent residence, because at the end it will, you know, jeopardize also the growth of the company in North America. Uh, anyone with questions about the visa program or, uh, you know, the uh, um, the the programs uh, that we have, please let us know let me know and I will be answering here for those that are in Facebook as well uh, you know if uh, you're following up our um, session right now just uh, you know uh, let us know if you have any questions about that in the meantime uh, I will be uh, going into what are the other programs very quickly because I know most people that normally uh, attend or uh, you know come a part of the info sessions they are more likely to come because of the uh, Startup Visa program. The corporate program basically imitates the three-phase program, but people entering into this program are not aiming to get a visa per se, or uh, you know they are not here for the level of support um, as part of the process. They maybe have uh, a co-founder or somebody that already um, basically uh, has a visa, or they are just managing a remote team that they are going to be building up through the corporate program. So basically they have the same motivation. They want to have um, a, you know, a company in Canada or North America in order to enter the global markets. But the only difference with the Startup Visa program is that they are not seeking for a visa. Being said that with this type of program, we don't require to have any approvals from the board of directors. It's directly with us, with our um, team members that we get the approval. It makes sense, if it makes sense, you know, for us to receive the company. And if it's a technology company as well, or they are acquiring technology and they are trying to understand the North American market, certainly we can help on that. This is a program that also doesn't have like a, a length um, it, so per se, you know, companies will enter with a minimum commitment now of six months, um, you know, three months where we are basically uh, imitating the, the three-phase program, and then they will continue depending on, um, you know, if they continue need, in need of our uh, support. If you go to the corporate program, you will see that, you know, we also have a C-fractional executive assigned that we also have, you know, four business mentors and a market entry mentor. Um, we also, you know, require to have as part of the criteria that the companies are going to have a headquarter in Canada. They can use our offices, certainly. And, um, you know, uh, we require for uh, at least one of the co-founders, the people that are attending the program to have an English level so they can communicate, of course, with our mentors. Um, for all these companies, I have to say either way you are entering to the startup programs or the corporate program, you can pre-register for our Canada 101, which is, um, you know, basically an event that we have uh, online and we explain about um, how to incorporate a company in Canada, how to immigrate to Canada. In between other things, we give information very detailed about the startup visa and other visas that are available for entrepreneurs. And we also, um, you know, have some session about angel investment and funding from the government. So all this information is, uh, you know, available in Canada 101, which is an event that we are going to have in November. So for those that are attending this uh, webinar, or those that are going to see the recording of this webinar, you guys can actually access uh, to Canada 101 for a very, very small amount, $6 basically, <laughs> uh, to have all that information in, in, 
uh, available. Uh, for the corporate program, also companies can apply anytime. There, there are no cohorts per se as a, in the other programs. Um, so, you know, whatever makes sense for the company, if the company wants to start an expansion process, they can start whenever, uh, you know, they, they, they think that is a the good time to start. Now, uh, we separated startup visa here because kind of like people normally go for the startup visa information first. So, but if, since I already gave this information, there is not any more, um, you know, necessary to, for me to go here. Uh, the other information that we have is about the new Comer Acceleration uh, Accelerator Program. This is a program that is uh, supported by the federal government. It's for co-founders that are already here in Canada. They are new permanent residents or they are uh, new citizens, and uh, they have a technology company and they don't have they don't have network or they they are trying to grow their companies. So this program. It's been very successful for us, for companies that are located here in, in Ontario and in Canada in general. We're trying to look for any technology company in Canada that is owned by a newcomer. Um, this uh, program in particular is for six months. So if you enter here, you can see it. Um, there is a waiting list for 2023. We are still in the process to figure out with the government. This program will continue running and we believe that it will so. Uh, but as you can see, also, it's very similar to the other programs. It's basically, uh, you know, imitating the other programs. Uh, the difference is that the newcomer is already in Canada, uh, is a permanent resident or a citizen. Is that the requirement for this particular program? Um, we need to have, like, uh, you know, small contribution for this program because it's free, basically, from the government is paying most of the program. It's a six-month program. And the um, company just pay $500 for the whole program in six months. So um, we also have, you know, a referral for uh, our Acceleration Plus uh, partners, and they will be, uh, you know, offering another six months program for all the companies that enter either to phase three corporate program or, uh, you know, newcomer acceleration program. This is a really nice, uh, you know, way to um, enter into our programs and receive even more services going forward that are going to be free. And the, the uh, this program, just to finalize, you know, the Newcomer Entrepreneur Accelerator Program uh, runs just once a year in September and it goes until March. Now, uh, the last program that I have here is the Hamilton Niagara uh, Scala Bootcamp. We do have a very particular book, boot camps in the year. This one actually starts next week. <laughs> so we receive companies that want to be relocated in Hamilton, Niagara. There are certain, um, you know, amount of companies that come into this program. Uh, this is another free program for the startups. Um, doesn't run again, like several times a year, but runs once a year. And these are the type of technology companies that are accepted into the program. Agricultural technology, digital, digital, digital health, uh, education technology, optimization, electronic vehicles, and robotics. So um, the, the region Hamilton Niagara uh, is supporting the program completely, as I mentioned. So companies don't require to pay uh, anything for this boot camp, which is one week. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that next week we are going to have pictures and many uh, good news about, you know, the results of this program. So we will make sure to communicate that with you guys. Now, uh, the other things that normally people ask is about, you know, who are our clients, um, you know, and how they can identify, you know, what type of companies we receive in our programs. So if you are, you know, a little bit curious about, you know, who are the companies that enter into our programs, then, uh, you know, you can come here and basically look at the companies. Every one of them have, uh, you know, a one pager so you can see what type of company it is. Um, we're very proud to have two unicorns in our portfolio uh, of companies and, uh, you can see them, you know, in our news here. Like if you want to uh, hear about the unicorns that we have, you can see in our blog and uh, get some news from there. 
Um, our events are also here, you know, for example, this event that is just, uh, you know, happening right now. And then the next one will be Canada 101. And then we will have another info session in December. And that will be the total events that we are going to have this year. We also have our Christmas party. Every other uh, Thursday, we have Margarita's Thursday. So this Thursday is our um, Margarita Thursday uh, featuring Sagitas. And uh, it will be a very nice event at the office. Those events are in person. And, uh, you know, in about us, you also will see, you know, what kind of job opportunities we have right now opening. Sometimes we have job opportunities, not just for our company, but also for the companies that work with us, you know, the alumni that we have in our uh, programs. Uh, sometimes they are looking for uh, new um, staff members and you can see here, you know, we always communicate that part. Um, uh, any other things that you see here, you know, white papers about some of the Latin American markets, by the way, we call ourselves Latin startups because we are a community, basically, you know, Latin American community, but, uh, you know, the last years we have received startups from all over the world. So for that reason, you're going to see big changes, uh, in, in the next years. And uh, uh, regards of the name and the and the community, but you know, for those that are interested in Latin America, certainly we have uh, white papers uh, that are coming, you know, here. And uh, in in G, this is the last version of the white. Sorry, there are people entering here a little bit late. Uh, so we have um, you know uh, white papers that you can access. Um, next year, we are going to have again our Latin American the Spotlight uh, series, which is a series of events where we are highlighting some of the Latin American markets uh, for those technology companies that want to enter in certain um, countries in Latin America. So uh, you will see that here too. Um, more than that, you know, uh, we uh, have also, you know, questions, frequent questions that people may ask you know, about our programs, how it works, you know, how you can uh, contact us, you know, things like that are pretty good and responded here. Uh, in our news, of course, uh, you know, we have, a, you know, also constantly uh, blogging and information about our programs, about our alumni, um, you know, and um, the companies that are currently in our um, programs. So I guess that's it for today. You know, it's basically, I always take 30 minutes exactly. <laughs> so I'm not sure anyone has any questions in regards of the programs or, uh, you know, our community or how to get involved. Uh, so if anyone has questions, please open the mic. If not, then I uh, just uh, finalize this part here. Um, but I hope that the information that I'm passing today is basically uh, clear about our programs. Uh, in any case, um, for anyone who wants to actually, um, you know, have a little bit more information about our programs or have not questions answered in this part here, then you can always send us a note to contact at latamistartups.org. And, um, you know, guys, we normally don't enter into individual uh, conversations because we get lots of email every day you know in regards of the program so that's why we do the info sessions it's easy for us to answer the questions through the info sessions so i don't see right now any questions uh so far uh but as you can see this session has been recorded uh so if anyone uh, you know wants to just oops and we are getting people entering <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah so i'm not sure if some people just got like probably the, the event was later on or something. <laughs> but yeah, so guys, uh, again, any any questions that you may have, uh, just open your mic and I'll be happy to be answering any questions right now. Other than that, I guess that we can finalize the uh, webinar here. And once again, thank you so much for uh, you know coming to this webinar. Um, if you have um, any other questions, contact us or go to our uh, social media. You can also 
send us a note there. Thank you for your attention and have a wonderful day. Bye now.